Hello, my name is August Fortin. Today I'm going to be presenting a model of doctor-patient communication that should make virtually all your encounters more effective and more efficient. The model I'm going to talk about today was developed by Robert Smith at Michigan State University. This model has been shown in at least one randomized controlled trial to be very effective and very efficient in getting the benefits of patient-centered interviewing. Let me show you how an encounter would play out using this model. Like any encounter, it begins with a beginning where we greet the patient, set the stage and generate the agenda, and then use patient-centered skills to draw out the patient's story in their own words. We then transition to the middle of the interview where we use doctor-centered interviewing skills to generate the routine database that we need remembering to always return to patient-centered skills if needed. We then continue the encounter with the physical exam and end with patient education and counseling. In the beginning, we use patient-centered skills to draw out psychosocial and symptom data. In the middle, we use doctor-centered skills to draw out symptom but also important psychosocial data. Our job is to integrate these two stories into a unified biopsychosocial story. I'd like to walk you through what an encounter would look like with a patient using this model. Hello. Mm -hmm. Dean Ward? Yes. Hi. I'm Dr. Fortin. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm one of the medicine residents here at Yale New Haven on the team that's going to be caring for you in the hospital. Okay. Uh, the emergency room doctors gave me a call and said uh, that you were being admitted to treat your pneumonia. So, um, are you comfortable here? right now? Mm -hmm. Okay. So step one is really quite quick. I introduced myself by name, used the patient's name and welcomed her. I took a quick look. There are no barriers to communication. We're both speaking the same language and she's, she seems relatively comfortable. And uh, I hopefully presented a, a, a warm persona to uh, put her at ease and uh, create the stage for the next part of the interview, which is step two. So what I'd like to do as a member of the team is ask you a lot of questions, find out what brought you here, and examine you, and come up with a plan for, for helping to treat you. Does that sound okay? Sure. So I understand from the emergency room records that you were coming in with a pneumonia. Was there something else that also caused you to come in today? Oh, basically, because uh, I noticed that I was coughing up blood. Okay. Was there something else other than that? No. Yeah. All right, great. So in the inpatient setting, step two is very quick. There usually is just one issue or a couple issues that are actually medically related. So now we're ready to move on to step three, where I will just begin by having her tell the story of why she's coming in to the hospital and use some non-focusing open-ended skills, primarily silence, to draw out that story for a little bit. So. What would be helpful for me now is if you just take me back to the beginning and kind of bring me up to now. Sure. Um, it's about, I'd say about two weeks ago, I started with a real bad cold and uh, a lot of coughing. And I would cough up some phlegm at some times. And then yesterday was the first time that I noticed when I coughed up some phlegm, it kind of looked like it was blood and it was like a thick, I don't know, like jelly-like substance. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then I did that a couple times yesterday, and then I did it again this morning. Okay. So this is really the end of step three, because I'm going to summarize now and ask her to focus a bit more on the symptom story. Step three is just to get the patient talking, and of course I'm paying attention to other information that's available to me that's nonverbal. She seems tired, she seems certainly not happy, more on the sad. She's speaking in a low voice. You can tell something about her age, her grooming, even just from her laying in the hospital bed here. So, so we'll move on. So it sounds like you had a couple weeks of kind of cold symptoms with a cough that just got worse. You started coughing up phlegm. Yesterday, you coughed up some jelly-like substance that was blood, and then it happened again this morning mm -hmm. and you decided to come in. Yeah. yeah. What else can you tell me about what's been going on? I've just been exhausted, um, not getting much sleep, 
because the cough pretty much keeps me awake at night. So that doesn't make for a very nice mom to be around. Okay. So. Now the patient has mentioned some personal context doesn't make for a very nice mom to be around. That's my clue that if I choose, I can start to explore the personal context. My other option would be to ask more symptom focused questions in an open-ended way, but I'm gonna choose to go uh, with the not nice mom part and see where that might lead us. So, it doesn't make for a nice mom. Tell me more about that. Just, I guess, I've just been so kind of crabby lately, being very tired. I don't mean to snap at the kids, but they're young and they don't understand when mom doesn't feel good. Sure. So, it's been hard. Yeah. Tell me more. I'm the only one at home, you know, with the kids. My ex-husband really doesn't have anything to do with the kids at all anymore. And I'm all they have. So when mom's not feeling good, you know, they don't understand. Gotcha. So it's really important for you to be feeling good. And, and when you're not, there's no one else to help out and give you a break. You're really always on. Mm -hmm. Wow. How's this for you emotionally? It's been really hard. And then when I heard that they were going to admit me today, I got really, I don't know, I guess like scared. Scared of? I don't know what I'm going to do with the kids. They've never, they've never been away from me, ever. Oh, wow. So I see you're really, you're really frightened about what was going to take care of your kids and what you're going to do about that while mm -hmm. you're in the hospital. I can understand that would be scary for a mom. I'm really glad you told me this. This is very helpful for me, and I, I think we can help, okay? What I want you to know is that you and I together are going to work through this and get to the bottom of it and, and get you feeling better. Does that, does that sound okay? Mm -hmm. So we ended step four with just understanding how this personal context of her being a single mom is affecting her emotionally and understood that she's scared about what she's going to do to keep her kids safe while she's in the hospital. I can't fix that immediately, but what I can do is respond empathically, really leaning in and saying, I understand how you're feeling this way. And that is surprisingly therapeutic for patients to feel a connection, because before now she felt very alone with this, and now she feels a little bit less alone with it. And now step five is just a transition into the middle of the interview when I'll become much more directive and more biomedically focused. If it's okay with you, what I'd like to do now is shift gears a bit and ask you a, a bunch of questions to better understand what's going on in your lungs and questions about your health in general and the like. And then as I mentioned, I'll do a physical exam. Does that sound an okay time to switch gears? Sure. Okay. So I'm wondering, have you had any fever with this? I think so, but um, I don't have a thermometer. Okay. So, but I felt like maybe the past couple of days I might have had a fever. Okay. And any chest pain with this cough? Yeah, a lot on, you know, the right side. It okay. seems with the coughing, it's just like, like a tight feeling, a little pain, okay. hard to breathe in. Gotcha. Ms. Ward? Yes. Hi, I'm Dr. Fortin. Hi. Hi, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, I'm one of the resident doctors here on the medicine team. The emergency room called me and said uh, you were going to be admitted to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And they mentioned that you had a pneumonia. Yeah. Well, if it's okay with you, what I'd like to do is learn more about what brought you into the hospital. I've got a lot of questions to ask you to kind of get to know you so that we can take the best care of you here. And uh, then I'll examine you. Does that sound okay with you? Sure. Great. So I, again, I understand from the emergency room that you came in with a pneumonia. Was there something else that also caused you to come in today? Just so we know how we're spending our time together here. Well, it was mostly just the, 
Uh, coughing up blood. Coughing up blood, yeah. okay. I did review the emergency room records, so I have an understanding of, of what they found, but I always find it helpful to understand in my patient's own words everything that's been going on. So would you mind taking me back to the beginning and bringing me up to now? Sure. Okay. Um, I'd say it was about maybe two weeks ago that I had really bad cold and I started coughing a real lot. Mm -hmm. So um, yesterday was the first day that I had coughed up, you know, I started coughing up phlegm. And then yesterday I noticed there was like, it looked like blood in it. I see. And then um, I did that a couple times yesterday. And then again this morning. So that's why I figured I should get it checked out. Okay. So you coughed up some blood yesterday a couple times and again this morning, and then you ended up here. Yeah. What? How did you get here? What happened in the interim? I just drove myself. You just drove yourself mm -hmm. in. Okay. Okay. Wow. So uh, tell me more about what you were experiencing. Yeah, a lot on, you know, the right side. Okay. It seems with the coughing, it's just like, like a tight feeling, a little pain, okay. hard to breathe in. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And you know, it really hurts when I cough. And my throat, I mean, I kind of losing my voice, I think, from all the coughing. Okay. Um, I'm just really tired, really tired all the time. Okay. So cough, some hurting in the chest, uh, coughing up phlegm, and now coughing up blood, and sounds like really feeling tired yeah. as well. What else? I don't, I guess I feel entire because I just, the cough wakes me up in the middle of the night. So, um, just exhausted and being kind of a crabby mom lately. Crabby so, mom. Yeah. Yeah. Say more about that. Well, I've got my two young kids that are home with just me. And uh, I feel bad. You don't. You don't want to be crabby or anything. I've just been so exhausted and not feeling well. That I just, I, I guess I snap very easily at them. Okay. You know, I don't mean to, mm -hmm. but I do. Yeah. So you're really not able to be the mom you want to be because you've been feeling so sick. Yeah. Wow. How's that been for you emotionally? It's been tough. You know, like I said, you don't. You don't want to be mean to your kids, and especially when I'm all that they have at home. And I feel really bad. And they don't understand. They're little, so. It's been tough. You seem pretty sad. Yeah. Well, I can understand. It sounds like it's really important for you to, oh, you have to be on all mm -hmm. the time, right, with them. And you've really been feeling sick the past few days and not able, to, not able to be the mom you want to be for them. Yeah, I get it. Well, thanks, thanks for letting me know this. This is helpful for me to understand. And I want you to know we're going to work together to get to the bottom of what's going on here and treat your pneumonia and get you feeling better as quickly as we can. Does that sound okay? Yeah. Okay. Well, if it's okay with you now, what I'd like to do is shift gears. I have a lot of questions I want to ask to better understand what's going on with your lungs and questions, as I mentioned, about you know your health otherwise, mm -hmm. so that I can get to know you better as a person. And then, as I mentioned, I'll examine you. Does it sound okay if we shift gears now? Sure. Okay, great. So that's the model. Now it's time to practice it.